day on news that the president had delayed his trip, uh, leaving for Indonesia by three days. Here's what she said. I'm delighted that the president will be here for the passage of the bill. It's going to be historic, and uh, it would not be possible without his tremendous, tremendous leadership, his persistence, his concern for the American people. Okay, Congressman Van Hollen, she set the timetable. I'm delighted the president will be here for the passage of this bill. Last night on Rachel Maddow, she said, when you have the votes, you have the vote. The vote's not today, so she doesn't have the votes, but she believes she can have the votes by Sunday. Obviously, this is your leader. You believe this is true? Sure. I think we could have the votes by Sunday, but we don't know exactly uh, when this bill will come up. We're still waiting for the Congressional Budget Office to provide uh, the numbers. We're confident that they will show that this will reduce the deficit, as both the House and Senate bills did. But until our members have a chance to take a look at that, uh, it's not going to be fair to ask some of those final votes uh, to make a final uh, decision. Congressman Cotter, uh, you're from Michigan, one of the uh, leaders of this sort of uh, undecided coalition of Democrats is another Michigan Congressman, Bart Stupak. Uh, you know, from what you hear on the ground, from uh, what you may hear in, the dele in your own state delegation meetings, where's Congressman Stupak on this? Well, I think one of the reasons I respect Bart so much is he can express for himself where he's at. One of the things that we're seeing in this debate, which you touched upon, Chuck, is the president staying here. I do not begrudge him travel at this point in time as a head of state, as someone as a commander in chief in a time of war. And if he wishes to stay, that's fine. But it does point out that the difficulty in passing the bill is the Democratic centrists that do not support the bill at the present time, such as Bart Stupak, or the American people. So I think that whether he stays or not, it does show that under a dominated Democratic Congress with a Democratic administration, the inherent flaws in this bill and the public revulsion to it is leading Democrats to oppose the bill. I want to go uh, back to Congressman Van Hollen a minute. One of the things that's going to be taken up in the reconciliation portion of this, you guys, the House on Monday has to start the fixes. You guys will do it in the House and then you send it over to the Senate. One of the items potentially in this fix has nothing to do with health care. It's this student loan bill that the president uh, is very supportive of. A lot of Democrats are. Why put the student loan bill in this reconciliation fix? Well, this actually relates to the Senate procedure, and the Senate parliamentarian has said that the two subcommittees have to make sure that independently uh, the bill is resolved under the budget. In other words, that there's a resolution. Uh, and this is a provision that has been part of the reconciliation package uh, from the very beginning under the budget rule. Uh, long story short, I think we should look at each of these things on the merits. And on the merits, what we're doing under the education bill is saying we're no longer going to provide a lot of money to the bank to essentially be the middleman sure. in terms of student loans. We need to make sure that the students get that money. I understand so the, the bill, purpose. but this is not about health care. No, I the, mean, do you wish it were not coming to this, that you didn't need to do this uh, in order to fulfill what the Senate parliament no, this, this is as a result of the budget resolution that the House and the Senate both adopted last year. They, that budget resolution made provisions for both health care reform mm -hmm. uh, as well as trying to make reform in student loans so that we could, you know, try and get more money to students and away from banks. If I could just point out on the health care reform bill, though, uh, what we're seeing in recent weeks and the recent polls that are coming out is the American people are actually, the, as closer the vote gets, the more support there is for the bill. People are evenly divided even after a lot of misinformation has been out there. And that's what the latest in fact, polling is. Congressman Cotter, I, I was going to point that out uh, as well. It does seem as if the polling, if we're, if we're all going to point to polling, and a lot of times politicians say, hey, I don't look at polls, unless, of course, people look at polls when they feel like it, it supports what they believe. But what do you say to the fact that it does seem these numbers are moving a little bit? And, and also what a lot of Democrats point out is some of the individual things in the bill are popular, even if the idea of the whole brand of the bill is not. Well, I think that you're right about that. I think that maybe their numbers are moving. People do tend to pick different numbers that they want. But one of the things we can look at, Chuck, are the actions. And today we kept the House Democrats. We stayed here today to vote on algae. Now, I voted for the bill. I'm happy I'm from the Great Lakes state. But what you're seeing is if the public is truly coming around to this entire, the bill in its entirety, the Democratic majority should be more than happy to let their, their members of Congress go home and hear how much if this bill is loved by their constituents. What I'm worried about is the fact that the American people are saying there are parts of the bill they like. 
If we can come to a principled basis for an agreement that empowers patients as consumers of health care, allows the markets to supply of health care to increase so costs come down and access increases, something can be done. And I think this is why consistently you see that people want us to start from scratch, find a good basis to go forward and have common sense, affordable, helpful reforms rather than a sweeping overhaul they reject. Are you going to campaign on repealing this if this passes? Do you believe you have to just, is that how you will campaign in November that if you reelect me, Congressman Cotter, I'm gonna vote to repeal health care, anything that's passed this year in health care? Well, I think if it's this bill, yes, I will. But if it's anything that's passed, if we come together and do something that's sane and sensible for the American people, then we'll look at that. But if it's this bill, yes, because again, my position has always been patient-centered wellness, try to increase the supply of health care through free market forces. So that position will not change, and this bill is not in accordance with that principal proposition. Congressman Van Hollen, what are you telling these nervous, because the, the wavering Democrats are the ones that are calling you privately and saying, hey, I'm going to need a lot of help from the DCCC this year. What are you telling them that say, hey, this bill's unpopular in my district? Why should I vote for this and, and potentially vote myself out of office? Well, first of all, every, every member is going to independently look at this bill, talk to their constituents, and make a decision. That's why uh, you have a majority of Democrats who supported the House bill, but obviously we had some that didn't. They will look at the Senate bill. They'll look at the merger. But what we're finding is they're going, they are going home and talking to their constituents, and their constituents are getting these envelopes that they're opening in the mail from their insurance companies showing 20, sometimes 50 percent increases in premiums. They're hearing that from small business. They're hearing it from big businesses. The current system is unsustainable. Our colleagues, for eight years, had an opportunity to do something about this. They did nothing. Premiums more than doubled over those eight years as insurance company profits quadrupled. Uh, now, look, I don't know uh, what my colleague is referring to with respect to government run health care. What we're talking about is giving individuals, our constituents, the same kind of choices we have under the Federal Employees Health Benefit Plan that he and I and other federal employees have, where you allow the free market to work, but you have a referee to look after the consumer's interests rather than throwing everybody to the to the over to the insurance Congress, industry. Congressman McCotter, is this yeah. Senate bill a better bill than the first one the House passed? No, because it does work from the premise that Chris denies, which is that it is an attempt by the government to increase its control over your own personal health care decisions. And if it was How such a good that? idea, to, Explain if it's such why. mandates, taxes, you're cutting half a trillion dollars from senior citizens' Medicare, you're taking and taxing employer-provided benefits to working men and women that are unionized and elsewhere. These are things you did not campaign on. And now to say that a massive 2,000-page bill with mandates, with higher taxes, with more government control over for what constitutes wasteful with reductions in entitlement spending for people like senior citizens isn't an expansion of the power of a big, broken, bloated federal government over average men and well, women this, that are this trying seems to struggle to be, is I'll absolutely counter to reality. Well, I'll me, say this. I, I mean, this does seem to be the basic split, though, between Democrats and Republicans is a belief in, in government doing this and a belief in not. Is well, that look, not fair? Well, I mean, well, that, well, this what, is an ideological, well, yeah, a philosophical difference. Yeah, but let's ask the Congressional Budget Office, which is a nonpartisan referee that looked at the plans uh, to, to weigh in here, and they have. There are 31 million Americans right now who can't afford health insurance, who are going to get covered. The plan they put on the table, at best, covers 3 million. The plan they put on the table does not prohibit insurance companies from denying coverage to people who have pre existing conditions. Ours does. Uh, you know, I, look, the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, I think our constituents should have the same kind of choices we're gonna, as members of Congress. I'm guessing uh, we're going to find out in November, this November, possibly the following two Novembers, who's right on this one. Congressman Cotter, thank you for joining us tonight. Congress